Hi everyone! I am Rebecca from Chemnitz and welcome to another Leave No Dye Behind Dyeing With Leftover Dyes video. I have no idea what project these leftovers are from. My note said that I filmed this back in November 2020 and well, I am editing today in August 2021. So I am really excited to go through the footage and see how I created the yarn that I know I filmed in this video. So I know what the yarn looks like, but I don't know uh, where the dye came from. <laughs> but before we jump into the project, please make sure that you are subscribed to the Chemnitz Tutorials YouTube channel. I post at least two new yarn dyeing videos every single week, and you don't want to miss any of it. So now, let's go see how I decided to play with leftovers last November. Hi everyone, I am Rebecca from Chemnitz, and I'm here today to leave no dye behind. From all the videos I was filming today, I collected the remnants of cups and bottles and measuring utensils and combined it in here. So we have a combination of Cabernet, Deep Purple, Dark Navy, and Forest Green from Dharma Trading Company. I think the overall color is going to be very purpley and it looks pigmented here, but I think that there's actually a lot less color than we would think. <laughs> Right here I have just some plain tap water and I added a reusable nylon zip tie onto 100 grams of Knit Pick Stroll Fingering Weight Yarn. This yarn is 75% superwash merino, 25% nylon, and it absorbs water really, really quickly. So I'm not going to pre-soak it for that long. I just wanted to make sure the yarn was good and wet. Here in my dedicated dye pot, I have some warm water that was used as a steamer basket earlier. So there is no acid in here right now. And it shouldn't be that hot anymore. I am coming in with the 100 grams of sock yarn that we brought, that we talked about. There, again, is currently no acid in the yarn. There might be a tiny bit of acid in this dye that I'm bringing over, but it wouldn't be very much at all. So I'm adding the dye in very asymmetrically and let's see what we can see. So my water is slightly acidic, so we might see, yes, some color starting to strike right away. Uh, there was a chance that we wouldn't, and I am seeing some breaking. The breaking that we're seeing is probably a result of the deep purple, uh, which definitely breaks, has some blue and red pigments, but I'm not sure about the rates of, say, the Cabernet and these other colors, so that's just something to consider. Now, we do need to add acid. Most of the color has struck. If there had been acid in here already with the heat, we would not have been able to get this level of coverage. It's still a tonal yarn, uh, but if we had acid in there, it would have been even more extreme with the tones. So we were able to get the coverage that we got in here because there was no acid there yet. But anyway, I'm now going to heat this up, bring it to a simmer and heat it for about 20 minutes. All right, let's remove this yarn. I love how my leftovers are always purple. Seems like no matter what I do, that is what I have left over. But we have this pretty lavender yarn, and now I need to let it cool completely so we can go and wash it. I swear, one of these days, I will have leftover colors that aren't blue or purple or green. It must be these are my favorite colors or something like that. Um, in more, on a more serious note, I do find that a lot of times when I mix colors together, uh, depending on the ratios, they do tend to average a little bit purple or a little bit green versus being more brown. And so that's why with these combinations of colors, this tends to be a hue that I see a lot. But I'm rinsing in some plain tap water adding some soap, and there is no bleeding, so I will put this through my spin dryer and hang everything up to dry. The yarn 
is really pretty. And it does seem like I get a lot of uh, pastel purples from my Leave No Die Behind videos. But I thought that it was really fun how we did see some subtle breaking into more pink purple and blue purple tones on the yarn and you can really feel those tonal colors when this is untwisted. When I film Chemnitz videos, I often will leave myself audio notes in the middle of a video telling me, you know, to take a screenshot or to pop up some other footage and things like that. Occasionally, I accidentally leave those notes in the video instead of editing them out. I don't think I did that today, but you probably have found some of that in videos in the past. And a note I left for myself when I was filming that is that I should do a new frequently asked questions video. And I think that that's a great idea and something I would like to work on. So please leave some of your burning questions or things that maybe I answer in a live stream but you would like me to address in a pre-filmed edited video down below in the comments. These can be questions about yarn dyeing, YouTube, Etsy, or more. I'm excited by the idea of filming a video answering some questions. And so maybe in the preparation, I'll also like put up a prompt on Instagram or something as well. Anyway, I am Rebecca from Chemnitz, and thank you so much for joining me for this quick little leave no die behind. I really enjoy whenever I have leftover dyes from a project to throw things together in a pot, see what kind of colors we get, and sometimes it is a beautiful color all on its own. Other times we might get something so pastel or uneven that maybe I want to use it for a future video. But I think that this is a gorgeous sort of lilac tonal that we have here and I'm really happy with it. Please give this video a thumbs up and thank you so much for watching. Bye!